What's up, y'all? It's the White Magical Tiger, the undercover hippie evangelist. Today, I got an amazing adventure coming up. About to hop on my Royal Enfield. Thank you, God. This is a very fun bicycle. Um, we're going to drive one hour to a monastery called Hemis Monastery, where they claim St. Isha possibly went to, but the, they had documents called this, uh, The Secret Life of St. Isha, or The Life of St. Isha. And for those who know, another name for Jesus Christ is Isha Masi. So that's what really piqued my interest. And so that's the entire reason I flew out to the state of Ladakh, India, to this uh, town of Leh. And now I'm going to drive to this monastery, maybe talk to some of the monks. I heard there's a cave that I can meditate in. And uh, I actually read the document last night, uh, The Life of St. Isha, The Secret Life of Jesus Christ. And it was an incredible read. I really enjoyed it. So uh, let's do let's do it. Alrighty, y'all. Um, mission accomplished. We made it to the to the Hemis Monastery. Now, rumor has it that there's a cave uh, somewhere in these mountains around here. I heard it's about a one-hour walk, so I gotta find some monks, ask them about a cave, and who knows? Maybe Jesus meditated in that cave. Now, interesting story about Jesus and caves in India. I went to Rishikesh. And you know how synchronicities work, how divine timing of God, all that. Um, multiple people, uh, two people, three people. Um, I think it was two people in the beginning and then one person afterwards. They told me, hey, you got to go to this cave in Rishikesh. And after two people told me, I was like, all right, I'm going to go go to that cave. And so I drove out there. I actually rented a motorcycle just to go to that cave. And, you know, it was one of the most powerful places that I have ever been to. And... Uh, yeah, it was instantaneous, just like dropped in powerful meditation. And uh, it was only afterwards, like several days afterwards that I found out that that cave is called the Jesus Cave. And that kind of blew my mind. And uh, I was really grateful because I was, I was praying to Jesus when I came here. I was like, yo, Jesus, like, I, I want to go everything, everywhere you went, I want to go where you went. And one of the first places was that cave. And then I learned out afterwards, it's known as the Jesus Cave. And you know, I'm serious, y'all. It was one of the most energetically powerful places I've ever been, I've ever meditated in. The most. It's, I've never been anywhere more powerful than that. Um, maybe. this one place that's actually coming to my mind. This place in Peru. Uh, when I was in Pizac, Peru, I drank some of the San Pedro cactus medicine. And then, um, and then the shaman brought me to, like, a portal. And that was trippy because I immediately started, like, having lights go off. Like, I was, like seriously going through a portal through my third eye and that was with the influence of the medicine as well that was pretty powerful that and this jesus cave in rishikesh so um, let's go find a cave y'all Someone just told me it's this way. But he's like, how are you gonna get there? Do you have like a guide? I'm like, uh, I'm friends with Buddha. <laughs> he's like, okay, but yeah, go that way. <laughs> All right, I'm hoping this is not the way because they got this door locked. <sighs> okay, it's a beautiful view. Not too attached to this cave. It's meant to be, it's meant to be. If not, it's not. I got God within me. That's all I need. Unfortunately, y'all, it may not be meant to be. So there's a building up there, then there's like, looks like some type of stupa up there. But the way to get there is through this door that they got locked. So I definitely need a monk that lives here to unlock that door for me. Maybe show me the way. May not be meant to be today. If Jesus meditated there or not, I don't know. It'd be pretty cool. Um, but I also want to show you all this. Uh, before I forget, I'll take another clip. Look at that meditator right there. Holding it down. Now what's really beautiful is just the fact that this ancient monastery, this Buddhist monastery, had records of a Saint Isha. And that one of the names... For Jesus Christ 
is Isha Masi. Now I've been since 2018, I've been studying that Jesus Christ was a yogi and that uh, his tea, more like an avatar, a God incarnate um, to bring salvation to the world through an upliftment of our consciousness, um, the second coming of Christ, you and me awakening to the Christ Krishna crystalline consciousness. And as I've covered so many times in my videos, I just keep regurgitating these scriptures over and over again. They're beautiful. By regurgitating, I mean like, I just, I repeat it a lot. But I start off with Matthew 6, 33, where it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So Jesus Christ is telling us our number one priority should be seek first the kingdom of God. Now, if you all know about Gary Keller, the founder of Keller Williams Realty, the most successful residential real estate company in the United States, possibly in the world, he wrote a book called The One Thing, and he's from Austin, Texas. Shout out to ATX. Uh, and he said... Um, what's your one thing? Focus on your number one thing. And his thing was every day when he woke up, he wanted to create the world's number one residential real estate company. You look at someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, his number one thing was to become the world's best bodybuilder. He became Mr. Olympia, Mr. Universe, like so many times over. Michael Jordan, uh, number one basketball player. Jim Carrey to be an amazing comedian. Uh, and you can look at pretty much any famous person, any athlete, and you can, it's obvious what their number one thing is. And it's becoming an expert, not even expert, like the top of their class and whatever their skill set is. And then you look at some of the saints. You got uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, you have Ananda Mayama, you have St. Francis of Assisi, countless saints, Gandhi, and you look at them and what's their number one thing? Their number one is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That's why they're known as saints today. And so Jesus Christ is saying, if you're wise, don't make bodybuilding, don't make basketball, don't make golf, don't make what your career, don't make your, it's not even your family. Don't make any of that your number one thing. Cause there's even another scripture where it's like, you have to leave behind mother, father, brother, sister, wife, children. You have to leave them all behind for my sake. We have to give it all up and seek first number one priority kingdom of God. Okay. That's great. White magic tiger. But where is the kingdom of God? Is it up there? Because if it's up there, St. Thomas says in the, Saint, uh, the Gospel of St. Thomas, he says if it's up there. Well, actually, Jesus says in the Gospel of St. Thomas, if it's up there, the birds are going to get there first. If it's in the water, the fish are going to get there first. And then if it's somewhere when we go and we die, why even worry about it now? The king, Luke 17, 21 says, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of heaven is now it's here now and it's almost like in another dimension another reality but it's within us and this idea that it's up in the sky or wherever or we go there when we die could be complete nonsense and it seems like the truth is that the kingdom of heaven lies within our heart it's within our heart and within here as well and jesus christ is saying if you're wise seek first the kingdom of god here and here now, I did watch an amazing movie called um, Kingdom of Heaven about the, the Crusades and Jerusalem. And, and I really loved um, their take on it. Um, I think it was a really well done movie. You got to watch the director's cut, though. Don't watch the one that came out in the movie theaters. Watch the director's cut. It's like an extra hour longer. So much better. And in that movie, they like for a few times, they talk about the kingdom of heaven. And he says, the kingdom of heaven is not somewhere here in this material world. It's here. And it's here. It's the connection between the mind and the heart. So what I'm practicing in my life is that I consider myself a spiritual scientist. And I have faith. Because what does Hebrews 11 1 say? It says, faith is the things hoped for, is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not yet seen. I have hope. I have hope that the kingdom of heaven is within me. But do I have evidence of that? No, I don't. Um, but as a spiritual scientist, I'm going to compare continue experimenting with these meditation ancient yogic practices of uh, Raja Yoga, Karma Yoga, Gana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Mantra Yoga, Hatha Yoga, 
kriya yoga i'm combining all of these i got like a platter um art a la carte style of all these different uh, modalities pretty much all summed up into raja yoga which means the royal path the path of the crown the path of the corona where the christ krishna crystalline consciousness will come in what does buddha wear on his head because i'm at a buddhist monastery what does he wear on his head he wears a pine cone hat you look up sahaswara crown chakra it looks like a pine cone pineal gland has the word pine in it what's the largest statue at the vatican it's a giant pine cone what is the pope the pope walks around with the staff what is at the top of the staff a pine cone the staff is symbolic of the spine in the old testament you have moses in the wilderness and he raises the bronze serpent up his staff it's the awakening of the kundalini jesus christ says i send you out as sheep amongst wolves so be as wise as serpents and as lovely as doves or as innocent as doves but he's telling us to be as wise as serpents and what is wise wise is wisdom and what is wisdom in greek it's sophia so he's making a connection with sophia and wisdom and it's the kundalini it's the shakti it gets into the seven chakras that saint john the revelator saint john the beloved talked about in the book of apocalypse the book of revelation he referred to it as the seven stars which is related to the seven planets he referred to it as the seven lamps the seven candlesticks which is where the jewish menorah comes from the seven candlesticks on the jewish menorah the seven seals that must be opened on the lamb's book of life well every book what does it have a spine and the seven seals on the spine it's talking about the spine in the human bodily temple and that the chakras have to be open the seven chakras the seven seals must be opened and so seven is a divine number god created the world in seven days uh you have the seven stars seven lamps seven candlesticks seven seals uh seven churches uh seven is repeated over and over and over again jesus christ says the eye eyeball the eye is the light of the body therefore if thine eye be single thy whole body shall be full of light and then you have with reincarnation as well because the buddhists and the hindus they and the yogis they all recognize reincarnation but the christians are like eh, it's the devil it's satanic blah 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 jesus christ clearly said that john the baptist was the reincarnation of elijah which would make jesus christ elijah's disciple elisha jesus christ is the reincarnation of elisha and john the baptist is reincarnation of elijah and he has another scripture where he's like um it's essentially uh you shall go no more out like you will be made a pillar in the kingdom of god and you shall uh, go no more out essentially when we complete this game of life the highest level of yoga is called nirva nirva kalpa samadhi it's moksha moksha liberation liberation from this realm um what they call maya illusion and the way to essentially get out um is through nirva kalpa samadhi through the the royal science of raja yoga meditation and as far as i know krishna taught arjuna kriya yoga jesus christ taught the same kriya yoga to his apostles so when we have jesus christ uh just the, the, he's born in bethlehem and the three wise men where do they come from from the east they follow a star that star is probably symbolically talking about the star that yogis see right here there's a star and deep levels of meditation the yogis claim you can see a star right here have i seen that star no but yogis that i do trust they claim that in deep, deep, deep levels of meditation, there's a star that appears right here in the spiritual eye. And what did Jesus Christ say? The eye is the light of the body. Therefore, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. And essentially, they penetrate that star with their consciousness. So the three wise men from the east followed a star, most likely here, maybe in the sky as well, as within, so without. And they came and blessed the baby Yeshua, the baby Isha, the baby Jesus in Bethlehem. And then at 12, 13 years old, what does Jesus Christ most likely do? Well, they have a document here, or they used to at least. Maybe it was taken by the Vatican or something, because the Vatican was just messing everything up. Uh, because they got a lot on the line here. The Vatican's got a lot of power. They have an incentive to hide this narrative of the missing years of Jesus Christ. The 18 years that he, the most famous man of all time ate more than half his life, because he, he lived to 33. So 18 years is literally more than half of jesus's life are missing and these people claim to have a document called the life of saint isha 
uh, also known as the unknown, uh, the unknown life of Jesus Christ, the life of Saint Isha. And I read it. I read it last night. You can read it in an hour, two hours, very short um, scripture document. And uh, it's pretty aligned with the Bible. It really is. From the beginning to the end, it's pretty aligned. It talked about, um, like, Moses and uh, God just blessing Moses and giving him the law and him just, like, saving God's people. And then uh, them just kind of delving, like, falling away from the law, getting into false idolatry, and then the rise of Messiah, Jesus Christ. And, and things just getting worse and worse. And so that's why Jesus Christ came into the world. And so when Jesus is 13, what is he doing? He's teaching in the temple. He's teaching the rabbis, a 12 year old, a 13 year old, a little teenager is teaching the rabbis. And then what's the next thing? He's 30 years old being baptized by John the Baptist, Elijah, in the Jordan River. All it says is like the only one scripture from the Gospel of Luke says like he gained wisdom and stature and like like love for God, something like that. And it's like one sentence for those 18 years. And like most Christians, I bring this up to them and like they have no answer. And I think it's absurd, ridiculous that he came here, that he came to India, that he came to Ladakh, that he came to Tibet, that he came to Nepal. They think it's absurd, absurd. But when you actually look at the scriptures, from the New Testament, the red words of Jesus Christ, he's talking about kundalini, he's talking about chakras, he's talking about the pineal gland, he's talking about meditation, he's talking about reincarnation, he's talking about divine mother, heavenly mother, holy spirit, Sophia. He's talking about truth. John 8, 32, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Now, back to that uh, Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Through these practices of all these different various yogas I've been doing, I consistently feel the peace of God. I feel the calmness of God, the relaxation of God, the love of God, and sometimes even the bliss of God. And this is coming from someone who spent a majority of his life in deep, deep sadness and loneliness and anxiety and depression and confusion and addiction and um, darkness. And what does Jesus Christ say? I am the light of the world. He that walk with me does not walk in darkness, but walks in the light of life. That's a guru. Gu means dispeller. Ru means darkness. Guru means dispeller of darkness. I believe that's John 8, 12. I am the light of the world, that he whoever walketh with me does not walk in darkness, but walks in the light of life. Jesus Christ is not just a guru. He is the universal guru. He is the Messiah, the Savior the avatar, God incarnate, God in the flesh, here to save us. He's not only here just to forgive us of our sins, which I would say, from a Voodoo Hindu perspective, is the clearing of bad karma. But he's here to save us, not, not just our body, he's here to save our consciousness, our soul, through this process of royal yoga meditation, Kriya Yoga, which I have faith in, I have faith that that's the real salvation Jesus Christ brought to the world. It's essentially what Krishna brought Arjuna. It's what Buddha brought to the world through Nirvana. Um, and it's what Jesus Christ brought. But Jesus Christ took it to another level because Jesus Christ essentially was perfect being. He was perfect. He never, which means he never broke the law, the law that God gave to Moses, the 10 commandments. Jesus Christ lived a perfect life from birth to death. He never broke any of them. And so when he was murdered on the cross by the Jews, uh, essentially, oh, really, it was these Jews that were fully possessed by Satan. Um, and it was it Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, beware of them that call themselves Jews, but are really Satanist. Um, a lot of people don't like to say that. Like, it's bad that, like, don't say the Jews killed Jesus, but it's a fact. The Jews murdered Jesus. Uh, and it's a fact that the Bible says Jews are Satanists, um, or the ones that killed Jesus were calling themselves Jews, but really Satanists. But a lot of people want to call me anti-Semitic or like a white supremacist for saying that. But those are simply facts. Jesus Christ was murdered by Jews, and Jesus Christ called those Jews Satanists. Um, so get mad at Jesus, don't get mad at me. But Jesus Christ says, uh, don't worry, if the world hates you, it hated me before it hated you. And so the world will probably hate me for spitting truth, spitting facts. Um, and yeah, I feel it in my heart. I feel that expansion in my heart and that it's something that needs to be spoken up. 
because that's a group of people like people bash catholicism they bash christians all the time muslims islam gets a bad rap but you but you do you say anything negative about the jews oh no no no, no. Uh, anti-semitic uh white supremacist why 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 can we criticize all these other ethnicities and religious groups but the, but the jews get a pass and the scriptures, the Holy Bible, Jesus, he straight up calls them Satanists. And it's a fact. We all know he murdered, that he was murdered by Jews. But it's a, it's, it's a touchy topic to talk about that. Don't, don't talk about that. It needs to be talked about. It really does. And I made a video on my channel um, where a certain event that happened in the 1940s during World War II that um, if you deny that event, uh, if you're in Europe or Israel and you deny that event, they will lock you up in a cage and throw you in jail. For simply thinking that event did not happen now that to me is a red flag why are you not allowed to talk about it and consider that maybe it didn't happen because if you th even think it's called a thought crime it's the one thought crime in the world that if you deny if you think that event in history his story did not happen they'll throw you in a cage they'll throw you in a cage and i have to be careful how i say it because uh, they'll probably make laws in America in the future making it illegal and then they'll come back to this YouTube video and be like, well, in the past you said this, now we're going to throw you in a cage. And, um, but, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, so, yeah, y'all, I hope you just, um, have an open mind and consider that the Bible is not the infallible, perfect truth of God. Uh, I made a vi uh, another video on my YouTube channel called uh, The Bible Effect. And where I, as far as I know, I proved without a doubt that the Bible is not the infallible word of God. The word of God is the Amen. Uh, it's the Om to the yogis. That's spelled A-U-M, which is where Amen comes from. Uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was of God, and the word was God. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, so a lot of Christians want to think the word is the Bible. So let's, let's replace the word with Bible. In the beginning was the Bible, and the Bible was of God, and the Bible was God. No, that makes zero sense. And that's a false idolatry. A lot of Christians have a false idolatry of the Bible. In the beginning was the Om Amen vibration of creation. And the Om Amen vibration of creation was of God. And the Om Amen vibration of creation was God. Please use your intuition and your common sense, which is not so common. Which one makes more sense? The word is a book or the word is the cosmic vibration of creation? To me, it's pretty obvious. And what is it? What is it? Amen. Amen is the sound. What the Om? The Om is the sound, the sound of creation. And it's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that pervades all of creation here. See that? It says the Holy Spirit's the wind as well. I take that as a confirmation right now. The wind blowing, being like, yeah, white magic tiger, you're on to something here. Thanks for sharing it with my children. <sighs> Jesus Christ is a fascinating individual. You look at Hollywood and it's totally okay to make fun of them. They don't really make fun of Krishna. They don't make fun of Buddha. They don't make fun of Muhammad. They definitely don't make fun of Jews. Christians and Jesus Christ, yeah, they make fun of them all day long. Movies, TV shows, books. It's fun to make fun of Jesus. Like just in common day, like you go to America, like it, 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 it's, and now it's cool to like laugh at Christians and make fun of Jesus. How do I know? I was one of them. I used to be a hardcore atheist. I would get angry. If I heard the name Jesus, I would get angry because I had demons, y'all. I had demons, but then Jesus Christ delivered me of those. He delivered me of a por pornography addiction. He delivered me of STDs, sexually transmuted demons, specifically the STD of Lilith, the STD of Jezebel, the STD of um, Ahab, all these STDs. Now, I'll be straight up honest with y'all. I've delved back into my old ways. I've been struggling. I've been um, hitting some roadblocks, some uh, bumps in the road, and I've been um, some hiccups, whatever it is. And I know that the way to healing and becoming a sanctified saint, a devoted devotee, a disciplined disciple, um, a purified purist, is for me to confess my sins with my brothers and sisters. And uh, I want to be pure and holy. I want to be a sanctified saint. I want to. I want to. I want my heart purified. And that on judgment day, I want God to give me the green line. Be like, yo, white magic tiger, Timothy. Good job, bro. Good job. I'm proud of you. Um, and. Uh, I struggle, and I definitely struggle with the sexual temptations. Jesus Christ says, if you even look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. 
and not only do i struggle with that with like just seeing a bunch of chicks in yoga pants whatever but also through like recently just watching pornography and um and it's something that i'm praying through it's something i'm meditating through i've realized that uh like for example eating garlic and onion that's an aphrodisiac so uh eating garlic and onion will make me horny and more likely to indulge in pornography or masturbate or s seek out a sexual experience even though i've been pretty good about not having sex um for the last several years except for one time which was a huge mistake where i got a huge std sexually transmitted demon from that experience and well the the what is it the the lining in the clouds the silver lining in the clouds was that through that um promiscuous sexual experience of getting that std which was lilith i got a i got lilith um that's when i learned that jesus christ can cast out demons and that was my first experience of a deliverance from demons um, which was a very beautiful experience and really helped help me know not believe but know that jesus christ was the messiah the savior um and that that's what kind of separated him from Buddha, from Krishna, is that he has the power to cast out demons. And, and the whole thing about him dying on the cross was that he never broke the law. He never broke the commandments. And so this universe, there's balance. The karma, karma is balanced out. And so to balance out the karma reparations for such an unjust crime done against Jesus Christ, Isha Masih, Yeshua HaMashiach, the scriptures say in the book of Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, that he went down to hell for three days and that he personally took the keys of hell and death from Satan. And then he came back, rebuilt his body, and resurrected himself. But now, Jesus Christ has the keys of hell, of death, of life, of earth, of heaven, Jesus Christ, as far as I know, he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Lord over Lord Shiva, over Lord Buddha, as far as I know. Now, uh, there's also a part, an aspect of consciousness as well, where uh, Master Yogananda, my spiritual teacher, he says whenever the Bible refers to Son of Man, that refers to Jesus' body, Jesus, Isha, uh, Yeshua. Whenever it says Son of God, that refers to the consciousness, the Masi, the Hamashiach, the Christ or the Krishna. And he says Christ Krishna is a consciousness that in Sanskrit it's Krishna, in Bengali it's Krista, in Greek it's Christo, in Spanish it's Christos, and then in uh, English it's Christ. I made a video about this. You can also look at other languages like Russian. They spell Christ with like K-H-R-I-S-T-O, like Christo. Like the, the, the spelling in Russian is literally closer to Krishna than it is to uh, English. Um, and it's really fascinating. So there's definitely a clear connection, as far as I know, between Krishna and Christ as in, in terms of consciousness. And we look at John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And then John 3.17, something is like, uh, for God uh, did not send his son to, uh, into the world to condemn the, to condemn the world, but to, that the world can be saved through him. Let's replace only begotten son with Christ consciousness. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, Christ consciousness, into the world, that whosoever believeth in the Christ consciousness shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That if you and me realize our divinity as the children of God, that through this awakening of what they call Christ, Krishna, crystalline consciousness, uh, essentially, uh, we will have eternal life. We'll be immortal. The body may not be going on forever, but our soul, our eternal soul, and that we'll have that eternal awareness and consciousness that goes on forever. Um, there's another saying uh, in, in Sanatana Dharma Hinduism called Om Tat Sat. In Catholicism, that's the name of the, the Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, and King Jesus Christ. Om, Om is the Holy Spirit. It's the Amen. Tat, T-A-T, it, in English means that. It means that which cannot be explained with words. That's the Christ, Krishna, crystalline consciousness. It's something that needs to be experienced, which is why I can't really talk too much about it because I'm not Christ conscious yet. Do I hope to be that in this lifetime? If it's God will, so be it. Thank, so thank you, God, if it's your will for helping me to awaken to Christ, Krishna, crystalline consciousness. And then Sat, S-A-T, means truth. And what is truth? The truth is the Father. We shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. John 8, 32. Om Tat Sat, in name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. There's also Sat Chitananda, a way to describe God. Sat, truth. 
Chit means consciousness, and Ananda, bliss. God is truth, God is consciousness, God is bliss. Sat, Chit, Ananda. These are ways to understand God that's something so, so beyond our comprehension that we need this like expanded consciousness found in deep meditation that these yogis tap into. And then what does Jesus Christ say? He, he's talking to the Pharisees and he says, um, is it not written in the law that ye are gods? Now it's a big no-no in Christianity in the church to say we're all gods and goddesses with a lowercase g of course. Um, but what does Jesus Christ say? I think it's like John 10, 34. I might've got that one wrong, but he says, is it not written in your law, ye are gods? But he was referring to the book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse six, where it says, uh, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. That's what Yeshua, Isha, Jesus was referring to. Ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. All of us, all of us brothers and sisters, Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim, uh, Taoist, pagan, Nordic, Celtic, uh, Navajo, Indian, American, uh, Incan, uh, Hawaiian, uh, New Zealand, Maori, Australian, Aboriginal, uh, New Ager, whatever it is. We all have that divine spark, what the yogis call the Atma, that divine soul. And that's what makes you my brother and my sister is that we share the same consciousness. We may all have different skin colors and different ethnicities and different creeds and different beliefs, different dogmas. But at the end of the day, well, not only do all of our bodies bleed red, as far as I know, maybe some of like the reptilian things, if that's real, maybe they bleed blue or something. There's something about blue blooded being, okay. There's like, this gets into the whole thing about like Adam and Eve and then like uh, they had Cain and Abel and then uh, Cain killed Abel, but uh, he didn't just kill him. He ate him, cannibal, cannibal. Um, so you have the offspring of Cain, which is probably demonic and evil. And then they had a third third son named Seth. And there's the offspring of Seth. So there's this idea that there's like an offspring of Cain, which is pure evil. Then there's an the offspring of Seth, which is like good, good versus evil. Good, drop the O, you got God. Evil, add a D, you got devil. Good versus devil. It's this like divine cosmic play with the yogis called Leela. Um, it's the hero's journey. And that essentially you and I are on this hero's journey of, and we, it's a test, it's a divine test through our thoughts and through our actions. Um, gets into the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast will either be in their forehead or their hands. Forehead is symbolic of thoughts. Hands is symbolic of actions. So through our thoughts and through our actions, are we gonna worship the beast? Are we gonna worship the God of this world, Satan? Um, the, the false God of the Old Testament, the angry, wrathful God of war that demands blood sacrifices and demands virgins as the spoils of war. No, we're gonna choose the path of goodness. Um, the, that's the hero's journey. It's save the princess, tame the dragon, with something to do with the Kundalini. Now, the whole Yahweh thing, as far as I know, there's two gods in the Old Testament. There's a good God and there's an evil God, but they're used by the same name. And so uh, Jesus Christ came to like re-emphasize Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father is the good of God and not necessarily the evil God of the Old Testament. That's why there's such a big difference between Heavenly Father in the New Testament and whatever God is in the Old Testament. And maybe there's glimpses of Heavenly Father in the Old Testament as well. I'm still figuring out that aspect. Uh, so yeah, y'all, I know this is like lots of twists and turns in this video, but I'm trying to like kind of piece it all together. And what does uh, Book of Psalms chapter 46, verse 10 say? It says, be still and know that I'm God. Essentially silence. What's Buddha? Buddha doing up there? I don't know if you can see it. Maybe it's right there. Yeah, right there. Okay. Is that a false idol? Maybe. If people start worshiping that thing, yeah, maybe it's a false idol. But, or it could be like inspirational, like, yo, that guy's meditating in stillness. Uh, so we gotta be like kind of careful with the whole false idolatry thing. Um, but like essentially get into stillness. And, uh, and so some of the things that I do in my own life is I do mantra yoga. And some of the mantra yogas are the Catholic rosary, uh, the Orthodox Jesus prayer, um, the Sanatan Dharma, the Hindu Maha Mantra, the Hare Krishna Mantra, um, the Buddhist Om Mane Padme Hum Mantra, the Zen Buddhist, um, just nothing, stillness. I kind of do a combination of those. I do the Kriya Yoga, uh, brought down from uh, Babaji Krishna to Lahiri Mahasaya to uh, Swami Sri Yukteswarji to Paramahansa Yogananda. As far as I know, the three wise men from the East, 
were Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahasaya, and Swami Sri Yukteswarji, as far as I know, and that they came um, to bless baby Jesus in Bethlehem. And then when Jesus was 13, he came over to India to learn Kriya Yoga. And essentially he comes back, goes back to Palestine, and, and that's what he's teaching his apostles. He's teaching his apostles Kriya Yoga as the highway path to um, unite our soul with the oversoul of God, our Atma, our Atma, our soul, the divine spark of God, with the Para Atma, the, the oversoul of God, uh, Heavenly Father. And yeah, y'all, it's just, uh, again, I don't have all the answers, but my religion is truth. That's why it's such a diversity. That's why I, I, I'm tapping into Buddhism, Sanatana Dharma, Hinduism, uh, Christianity, Gnosticism, esoteric, like esotericism, occultism. People get freaked out over esoteric occult. It just means parables. Jesus Christ said over and over and over and over and over again. His teachings are about parables, hidden teachings, esoteric hidden teachings. Esoteric just means within. Exoteric means without. Occult means hidden. It means within. That's all it means. Parable, occult, esoteric, all the same thing. Jesus Christ was esoteric. He was occult taught in parables uh and so yeah and so i read the document um the, the life of saint isha last night and it was very interesting it talked about like uh moses and the law coming to moses and then people following the law and then people fall straight away from that so god sends the messiah and people are really straying away so uh, messiah isha turns 13 comes to india learns the teachings of uh, buddhism hinduism which are the same thing truth is truth he learns truth and he meets other God-realized beings here, real yogis that are tapping in, the three wise men. Um, and essentially, uh, that the path of this God-realization is the practice of Kriya Yoga. And then comes back to um, Palestine, Israel, and is like teaching this salvation through our own practices. That's why St. James says, faith without works is dead. Like, how do you show your faith? He's like, I show my faith through my works. And uh, part of that, part of that works is keeping the commandments. Um, and what is essentially what does um, Jesus Christ say? He says uh, the two great commandments, thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And third one, the unspoken one, thou shalt love thyself as well. And so a combination of all those. So God, you, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love the God with all your heart. That's bhakti yoga. Love God with all your mind. Gana yoga, love God with all your strength, that's karma yoga, love God with all your soul, that's raja yoga, love your neighbor as you love yourself, well if you're going to love your neighbor as you love yourself, you got to learn how to love yourself too, and then, um, but that takes work, it takes work to do all this, bhakti yoga, gana yoga, karma yoga, gana yoga, that all takes works, that all takes works, keeping the law, keeping the commandments takes work, and that's like, how do you show your love for God, it's like, you keep God's law, and, and what is, what is St. James, and no, St. John, um, St. John the Beloved, the Revelator, say, he says in 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, Hereby we do know Jesus Christ um, if we keep his commandments. And if we claim that we know and we love Jesus Christ, but we don't keep his commandments, we're a liar and the truth is not in us. And well, it, it doesn't say if we know and love him, but it says like if we know him, we keep his commandments. But how many people keep his commandments? Like one of the main ones, Jesus Christ clearly said, Thou shalt not kill. And he was repeating the, one of the commandments, Thou shalt not kill. Um, and what does John, what does Genesis 1 29 say? It says our meat shall be fruits, um, vegetables, seeds, nuts. That's our, that's our meat. Our meat, our meat is every herb bearing seed and fruit bearing fruit tree. Uh, very clear in the book of Genesis chapter one, what our diet is, our prescribed diet of God is thou shalt not kill is pretty simple. Um, don't kill, don't kill the fish. Don't kill the animals. Don't kill the birds. Uh, John, Genesis 1, 28 says we have dominion over them. We're supposed to protect them. We're stewards of them. The next line says our meat shall be the vegetables, the plants, the fruit trees. So when people say like, oh, you're killing kale, it's like Genesis 1, 29 says you can eat kale. That's your meat. It's okay. Um, and I just got to tell you all, I grew up in Texas. And every day of my life, ate meat. If I was served a plate that was all like grains and vegetables and fruit and just like amazing like an amazing vegetarian dish no nah, I, I need a chicken i need a fish i need a steak on there it wasn't a real meal unless there was meat on there then i started learning about alkalization and detoxifying the body and that a lot of that is through fruits and vegetables and so i cut out the meat and about three months later my heart started to open up for the first time in my life and i started to feel real compassion real compassion in my heart and then soon after that, God started really 
um, contacting me. I started really feeling the presence of God. And that's why in Buddhism and Hinduism, they have ahimsa, which is nonviolence. And that's why in Christianity, it says thou shalt not kill. It's not thou shalt not murder. Jesus does say thou shalt not murder, but he also says thou shalt not kill. And the law says thou shalt not kill. It means humans. It means animals. It means birds. It means fish. Don't kill them. And a lot of Christians have their hearts closed off and they don't realize it, but they're breaking one of the commandments. And Jesus Christ says in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus Christ was in a scene. He was a healer. He was a therapeuta. He was a therapist. Um, the Cathars, the Gnostics, they were all tapping into it. They were all tapping into veganism, vegetarianism, nonviolence, um, living harmoniously with the birds, the animals, the fish, the nature, very peaceful, um, nonviolent, um, peaceful warriors, essentially, um, standing up for righteousness sake, but in a defensive position. And uh, as far as I know, y'all, this is the truth. This is the blending of Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity. It's the truth. And that the truth is nonviolence. The truth is meditation, sitting in stillness, going to heaven now in this life, not waiting till we die, not waiting till we go up there to the sky, going within. So thank you for listening to this video a little bit longer than usual, but this is a special occasion. I'm at the Hemis Monastery in Ladakh, India, the Jesus Christ Ministry of India. May God bless all of you. Namaste, which means the divine spark of God within me is the divine spark of God within you. The Atma within me is the Atma within you. The soul of God, the love of God, the light of God, the life of God within me is the love of God, the life of God, and the light of God within you. May God bless all y'all. Amen. All right, so some of y'all might be wondering, well, white magic tiger, that's all great and all, but what about the cave? <laughs> Well, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Um, one of my favorite sayings is rejection is God's protection. Um, but I'm still here. We'll see what happens. Uh, but it looks like it's not happening today. Uh, they got a temple. I'm going to go in there, do a little meditation, and uh, I'll see y'all soon. Oh, y'all. So I would say that's a uh, mission accomplished. A few things I'd like to add. The first one is uh, that temple, the meditation. First off, the shaking. That's that's the Kundalini shakes. I'm not doing that on purpose. Just like meditating and the sound of that drum, like beep, 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 beep. My whole body just starts shaking. Um, that's been happening for a couple of years now. When I meditate, I shake like that. And that's, that's simply the Shakti. That's Divine Mother Kundalini. Uh, and that, that gets into the whole dragon symbolism and all that. And like Jesus being the same, being as wise as serpents. Um, the peace that surpasses all understanding. That is what I experience when I meditate. And to me, when people say like th this idea that it's ridiculous that Jesus came to India and that like yoga, meditation, kundalini, all this is evil. <sighs> Yo, I'm like blissing out in there. Like I used to get drunk. I used to get high. I've smoked DMT. I've had mushrooms, cacti, ayahuasca, uh, cocaine, all sorts of stuff. Meditation's the best. It's simply the best. It's free 99. Um, I, I'm sober now, yeah, by the way. Like, I don't I do not do drugs. I mean, oh, I did smoke a cigar the other night. I, I would say tobacco is the, only, the occasional tobacco. 
but that's pretty rare in itself. But I just want to say, like, one, one, the point I'm making is that what I'm tapping into is accessible to me at any time for free. And I'm just like, yo, this is where it's at. And so in that particular meditation, I got my mala beads. There's 108 of these. And so what I was doing, I was doing the mantra, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. Uh, that particular time I was doing, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Amen. And I was doing it up the spine, putting my concentration, my focus on the root chakra, one breath, like inhaling, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, exhale, have mercy on me. Amen. Next one, sacral chakra, solar plexus chakra, heart chakra, throat chakra, medulla oblongata, third eye chakra, crown chakra. Then I would go down and I would go through the sephiroth. I would go kether to Hokma, to Bina, to Chesed, to Kabura, to Tiferet, to Nidzak, to Hod, to Yeshod, and then finishing in Malkuth. Then I'd go right back up, up the Sephiroth, and then right back down the spine, down the chakras. And so I did 108 breaths, 108 prayers slash mantras. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I feel great just for doing that. Just the slow breathing, the mantra, the, the being in stillness. And then I finish it off with 30, well, after that I do 36 Kriyas, which is a form of spinal breathing taught by Paramahansa Yogananda. And then I finally finish in stillness, kind of like a Zen Buddhist, just don't do anything. Uh, Psalms 46.10, be still and know that I am God. Kind of thing. And so it's kind of the combination of all those. I'm doing those prayers, targeting the different chakras, energy centers in the bodily temple. Then I'm doing the ancient science of Kriya Yoga. And then I'm simply just do, sitting in stillness, just enjoying it, basking in that peacefulness. Simply Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. It just it takes about 30 minutes probably for all that. And to do it in a temple like that, that's ancient, that's had hundreds, thousands of Buddhist monks meditating in there, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of hours of meditation in that spot. The mana, the prana, the vril, the chi, the ki, the life force sitting in that room. That's, that's what's so beautiful about this pilgrimage and going to these ancient sites because not only did, was there a chance that Jesus Christ was actually here? I'm not sure about that, but it's still cool that there was an ancient document about Saint Isha, which is Isha Masi, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and his story that these ancient Buddhists knew about Jesus Christ and doc in this, do this do ancient document documented that he came to India, went to Nepal, went to Tibet, went to Ladakh, where I am right now. And it's just like, it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And I feel like this is the truth and that I am aligning myself with the real teachings of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Isha Masih, that these are the esoteric, occult, Gnostic, just original Christian teachings. And that I wish it was more prevalent, more popular, that this is what I was taught when I was a child and that this is what was taught through all the churches, but it's not. And that's part of the reason why I make these YouTube videos. It's part of my dharma, my purpose to share this and share my experience. And like, yo, the evidence I'm getting is like, I feel peace. I feel peaced out, blissed out. It's incredible. And I'm just like, I know I'm onto something here. The scriptures that support it, my personal experience supports it. These ancient Buddhists, they documented it. It just makes sense to me. It just makes sense to me. The biggest conspiracy of all is Jesus Christ. That's the biggest conspiracy. They don't want you to know that he came to India, that the real teachings of Jesus Christ are about meditation. All of us seeking first the kingdom of God within us and becoming Christ, Christian, crystalline conscious. Because if you're trying to take over the world, like the Vatican, ancient Roman Empire, ancient Roman Catholic Church trying to take over the world, well, it'd be a lot easier if people were didn't know the truth. And they were kind of dumbed down by fluoride and chemtrails and poison in the food, GMO, all that. It'd be a lot harder if everyone realized that they were gods and goddesses and Christ, Krishna, crystalline conscious. It'd be a lot harder to take over the world if people really knew their divinity and knew that they were all divine children of God. Um, and so they have an incentive to hijack the teachings. They're making a lot of money off it, just that alone. They make a ton of money off of it. And so it's just kind of sad and I, I want to shed light on it because I feel like I'm tapping into something that everyone can benefit from. It's helping me heal from my problems, my addictions, my loneliness, my anxiety, my depression. It's transmuting all of that and it's replacing it with the love of God, the peace of God, the calmness of God, the joy of God, the bliss of God, all of it. It's absolutely incredible. And 
and I'm, I'm becoming more and more hooked on it. And this is why God's called the most hot, because God's the best hot. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is that I read the document last night, the, the, the Life of St. Isha, the Secret Life of Jesus Christ. And um, I, I've been hearing rumors, this idea that they say that like Jesus Christ didn't really like die in Israel, that they brought him over here. And there's some place in Kashmir, uh, I looked it up last night, eight and a half hours away from where I am right now. And they say they have the tomb of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't buy it. I don't buy it because that denounces the whole idea of him sacrificing himself, him going down into hell for three days, getting the keys of hell and death, him resurrecting himself and going back to heaven, all that, like, all that foregoes. If he just, like, essentially escaped and came here back to, came back again a second time to India, and then, like, they, they buried him here. That foregoes everything. That foregoes his sacrifice. That foregoes him taking the keys of hell and death and having dominion over Satan, dominion over all the demons, that he is like the most powerful name of all names, that he is the king of kings, lord of lords. It foregoes this idea that he conquered death and that he resurrected himself. It foregoes all that if, if, if they say Jesus Christ was buried here. So I don't, I did, so when I was reading this document last night, the, the life of St. Isha, I, I, as I was getting towards the end, I was like, are they going to say this? Are they going to just say that? Like, Cause I was really digging the idea that like he came to Ladakh, India here, uh, documented at this uh, 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 Hemis monastery. I, I was really digging that idea, but as I'm reading this document, I'm like, are they going to say that Jesus Christ like was being persecuted and then escaped Israel and came back, came back to India and they buried him here instead? And fortunately, the document aligned with the Bible and they said, well, unfortunately, but they, they say he was crucified um, in Israel and it pretty much aligned. It, like a lot of that document aligned with what the Bible says and it gave it even more validity. Um, and so if you have the chance, check it out, read it for yourself. It took me about an hour, maybe two hours last night. And um, yeah, y'all, I just, I love the truth. I feel like Jesus Christ is the truth. He is the way, the life, the truth. None gets to the Father but by through him. But what does that mean? The way, what's the way? The way is Taoism. That's the yin yang, the way, the life. What is the life? Well, he conquered death. He is the life. He's literally immortal. And that through him, we can get everlasting life, immortality. And that he is the truth. John 8, 32, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. None get to the father, but by through him. Well, what's the father? The father is the truth. And what is it? The father's cosmic consciousness. And what's the son? Christ consciousness. You cannot get to the cosmic consciousness of the father unless you become Christ Christian, crystalline conscious. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the Christ Christian, crystalline consciousness, that whosoever believeth in him, the Christ Christian, crystalline consciousness shall not perish but shall have everlasting life because they will realize their immortality they will realize that they are that they are the soul they are the divine child of god the divine goddess the divine god divine daughter son of god lowercase g y'all god is the ocean we are the individual waves on the ocean of spirit you're a wave i'm a wave on the individual like we're, we're that's the individuality that's what makes you different from me is that you're a wave on the ocean i'm a wave on the ocean all of our other friends are different waves on the ocean but put together is the ocean of spirit that's god you're a lowercase goddess you're a lo lowercase g lowercase god goddess my brother my sister we share the same consciousness your soul my soul comes from the over soul of god that spark of god yeah you have a spark of god within you i have a spark of god within me that consciousness that's within you within me we share that that's 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 the unity between us that's makes you my spiritual brother my spiritual sister and where does that consciousness come from it comes from god so may god bless all y'all namaste Krishna, Christ, Guru, God, Krishna, Christ, Guru, God, Krishna, Christ, Guru, God, Krishna, Christ, Guru, I surrender to Thee, I surrender